Hello everyone, my name is Matt Reed, and welcome back to another episode of Double Take, where I take a second look at games and movies to see if they're as good or as bad as everyone says they are. This week, I am bringing you an exciting and familiar open world game. No man, Scott, I mean, Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is an open world multiplayer game that focuses on multiplayer interactions, weaving together PvP and PvE as one and the same experience, focused on open sea ship combat with large amounts of exploration in the mix. This recipe seems like the perfect storm for a game to thrive, yet upon release the game was met with moans and groans of boring end game and overpriced grinding. I wanted to get into this step by step as someone who has never played this game before. Usually, the first thing I do is I would start off with how I enjoyed the story, but besides small journal entries and roleplay, this game has no story to speak of. So let's start with what I liked about this game instead. The first thing that I noticed and one of the first things that I started to attempt to master was the combat. The ship battles were hectic, having to balance repairing your ship with assaulting the enemies, sometimes being outnumbered 8 to 1. It was easily the most rewarding part of this game, even when fighting the titanic megalodon or the legendary kraken, and coming so close to losing all of our hard-earned loot each time. I only wanted more of those chance encounters. The next part that I enjoyed about this pirate epic was the exploration. Though cartoony, the animation is excellent in the atmosphere of pulling off silly pirate treasure hunts, and I especially enjoyed the way that you are forced into learning the map using compass directions and judging landmarks to find your valuable target. I think that other games looking for a way to do some treasure finding could take some notes from this game. Now that I've touched on some of the positive things that I have to say about this game, I'm going to talk about some of the problems that I had with this one. One of the number one things that I can agree with from the release of this game was the grinding. This is a multiplayer game, so in theory you can avoid all grinding by just PvP combat, but this isn't always easy to come by. About half the time, me and my friends have come across dead servers, which aren't always fun. When you're sailing the seas with no threats to you, it becomes menial grinding. While there is a large amount of things to do in this game, it boils down to the same thing. You're just farming gold to increase reputation and buy cosmetic items. Yes, there are many different ways of doing this, but the main objective ways of earning loot, not just chance encounters with large oceanic creatures, all become pretty repetitive. After a few long sessions of sailing and looting, you start to realize that the greatest things you are farming money for are fancier looking ship adornments and wardrobe options, other than reputation to unlock higher missions to do the same thing over again. The worst part about it is that the loot is more random than I think it should be, so you could fight waves of skeletons and dig up many treasures for a small payout. The worst part about this is that after taking an extremely long journey Receiving mediocre loot for your effort, you still have a chance to have your ship sunken on the perilous journey back to the vendors to cash in, leaving you and your crewmates now broke and floating to the bottom of Davy Jones' locker. The last thing I'm going to mention about the specific downsides of this game is the sailing time. Sometimes while sailing, while rare, there are sea battles that are extremely entertaining. Every other time, however, can be boring especially if you have to go a great distance as you are just coasting through the water. Not much to do in a straight line. Sometimes slower than usual as you might have to sail against the wind, and that's no fun. Now, it's time for that age-old question you have to ask with any massive multiplayer game. Is it only fun with a crew of scurvy pirate mates, or is it better flying solo? And once again, that question is very hard to answer. Starting with a simple answer, don't play this game solo. It is not meant for a solo outing, and you probably won't make it more than a day of playing on your own. I know I didn't. On the multiplayer side, I've had two completely different experiences. I've played with some random people and had a moderately fun time. But when I played with my longtime gaming friends, I had a blast. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that the experience is what you and a group of friends make it. To sum things up, if you're looking for an efficient and gritty pirate game that takes itself seriously, then look elsewhere. But if you're looking for a cartoonish adventure for you and some friends to pull some pretty ridiculous and zany things, then Sea of Thieves is right for you. I will, however, mention that this game still has a ridiculous base game price of $60. But there are all sorts of deals through Microsoft and other apps where you can access the game for cheaper, so I recommend looking into that. If you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns on how to sail the seven seas, agree with me, or even disagree with my opinion, 
please feel free to let me know on our Twitter at ZTVGoofingOff using the hashtag DoubleTake. My name is Matt Reed, and this has been DoubleTake.